Well, you know that by now the name of uh, Michael Simon. He is a renowned chef from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, just across the lake from us. He's hosted over 100 episodes of The Melting Pot on the Food Network. He's been on Ready, Set, Cook and Food Nation with Bobby Flay. And uh, in 2007, he competed on the next Iron Chef, and he won. And so now he's got his place as a permanent Iron Chef on the Food Network and hit series Iron Chef America. Good morning, Chef. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good. Are you a late-night chef or an early-morning chef? I'm both. (laughs) (laughs) I know what you mean. (laughs) Welcome to my world, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Go to bed late, wake up early. That's just how it works. Who makes the best breakfast in the world? I don't mean a person, but maybe a region, a place, a country. Best breakfast. You know, I I think just for sheer volume and and variety, it's hard to beat New York City. Yeah? It's hard to beat. But, you know, I... Breakfast at Zingerman's isn't so bad either. Hey, a localized comment right here in Ann Arbor. They've got that fantastic bread and everything else. And when I think of uh, New York City, the first thing I think of is a bagel. Yeah, absolutely. Bagel's tough to beat. Well, I have a restaurant, too, in in, uh, Detroit called Roast, right downtown in the book Cadillac. You know what? I just ate there the other day after the Lions game. How'd you like it? The most amazing thing that we were all talking about. And by the way, we were eating. I was with Matthew Stafford, the Lion quarterback. His father was in town. And we sat in the window there, and we had a blast. And the thing that everybody was talking about was that marrow dish. Oh, it's so good. I've it's never seen anything marrow. like that before. Could you describe that? Well, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm Greek and Sicilian, so the marrow to us is something that we've, I ate my entire childhood where they just they, they take the bone of, of beef or veal and they roast it, and I just call it beef butter. You just scrape it out right on some grilled bread, some pickles. It doesn't get any better than that. Wow, what is the what is the texture? It's like butter. It's creamy and rich and delightful. <laughs> <laughs> you got to admit, some people when they hear they're eating bone marrow, it sort of puts them off a little bit, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I think you know. I think it depends how you were raised, what you grew up eating. You know, to me, it's such a natural thing. To some people, it's not. Um, but it's it's way better for you than some of that processed stuff out there. So mm-hmm. you know, maybe it doesn't get any more from scratch than that. Yeah, and it's served right in the right in the bone. I understand, huh? Yeah, it has its own little vessel. <laughs> <laughs> What's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Oh gosh, you know, I, I've pretty much you name it, I've eaten it. Really? Um, oddly enough, the only food that I don't like is raspberries. <laughs> no kidding. What about yeah, everything else? I've eaten. I've brains, kidneys, livers, hearts. I've eaten it all. Really? Um, what about? Have you ever had shark fin soup? I have. What did you make of that? I mean, that's a delicacy, and it's also controversial, obviously, uh, in Japan because they they basically pull the sharks up, chop the fin off, and throw it back in. It sinks to the bottom and drowns, and that makes PETA and lots of other people angry. But shark fin soup, as I understand it, is uh, something like, what, $75, $100 a bowl, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's not cheap. It is delicious, though. What doesn't make PETA angry, though, at the end of the day? Well, that's true. (laughs) I mean, we're carnivores, ultimately, aren't we? Absolutely. When you don't open a restaurant called Roast uh, if, if, if you're looking for a vegetarian meal. <laughs> um, I hope that restaurant's working out well. It seemed very busy that night, and that hotel has obviously gotten a lot of rave reviews. Have you, and, and you mentioned Zingerman's in Ann Arbor. Have you spent any other time in Michigan? Has, uh, has uh, the Italian guy brought you up there to Traverse City or anything like that? I, I've gotten around pretty good. You know, being from Cleveland, we're very close. Um, you know, I... There's some great little restaurants there, some great secrets. I, I, I like Detroit a lot. Tell me the truth when you come up to roast. Mario Batali is the guy I was thinking of, by the way. He lives up in Traverse City in the yeah, summertime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you, tell me the truth, though. When you come to roast to check the place out and have a look, how often do you get there? Um, I, you know, I usually get there anywhere from you know, three to seven days a month. Wow, that's a lot being a TV star and a chef, too. Uh, well, you know, the beautiful thing about doing all these great shows like Food Feuds and cook like an Iron Chef, an Iron Chef, an next Iron Chef is you're able to kind of film them in a, a, a three-month span throughout the year, and then you spend oh. the rest of the time at your restaurants doing what you do. I see. Um, have you uh, gone over to the Lafayette Coney Island for a, 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 you know, a, a regional We actually dish? have. A, uh, food, we did a food feud there between American and Lafayette. Yeah, American uh, one. Coney Dog versus Coney Dog. Yeah, and so you, did you, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, the American uh, next door to the Lafayette was the winner, wasn't it? Yeah, I did a blind tasting in American one. <laughs> Which, that's the beautiful thing about food, food, food feuds. That's what caught me so off guard. I was always eating at Lafayette, and then when I t- blind tasted them side by side, I picked American. 
Isn't that funny? It's all about the marketing sometimes, isn't I, it? I even fooled myself. Um, I have to uh, invite you, if you haven't been there yet, to please uh, go to Ireland and try the full Irish breakfast. And uh, I don't know if you've had that or not. Have you? Um, I have not. Okay. Now, then you'll Too stop. There's boiling going on there. You'll stop. T- <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people there, they get put off, too, by the black pudding and the white pudding. And uh, I say give it a try. What the heck? Oh, I love the black pudding. It's delicious. Well, it's terrific to talk to you. Uh, do you have a, a book or a website or anything we should let people know about? Um, y- you could... You could... Find out about all the new shows at uh, foodnetwork.com. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Chef Simon uh, or on Facebook at Michael D. Simon. It'll keep you updated on all the shows, what's going on. Um, my cookbook's called uh, Michael Simon Lives to Cook. Uh, so, yeah, tune in, dig in. It'll be fun. The new shows are going to be fantastic. They're a blast featuring all different cities in America, including Detroit. Well, you've made us all hungry this morning, and we'll see you, of course, at Roast Downtown Detroit. All the best to you, Chef. Stay well, Michael. Congratulations. Michael Simon. Roast is his restaurant in downtown Detroit, but he's a national, soon-to-be international star when he gets to Ireland for breakfast. I'm Michael Patrick Shields.